Hey, I'm Jared, and in this video, we're going to take a look at how I approach detailing this Neomorph model. Today, we're going to look at everyone's favorite part of a character, and that's the details. In this video, I'm going to show you some of my process of how I go about making my details, as well as how you can detail your model in a way that doesn't detract from the forms underneath, but ultimately enhances your sculpt. So let's go ahead and just jump right into it. Here I have a model that I've gone and taken through the sculpting process. I've defined my primary forms, I've refined my secondary forms, and I'm now at a point where I can start to think about adding in the tertiary details on top of that. So to get things started, the first thing that I like to do is make a pass over the model and start to break up my forms one step further. I would call this my tertiary forms. This is going to be a subtle pass to break up the secondary forms and create a flow over the entirety of the model. To do this pass, I like to usually use a modified clay brush that I have, but ultimately any brush will do as long as you can just start to create some form and volume and directionality to your strokes. For this pass, my strokes aren't necessarily intended to refine the form, but more to define some of the directionality and flow of the form. I like to let my hand kind of find what feels natural and find a point where I want the stroke to start from and originate at. While doing this, I just go over the forms, and in doing so, I create stroke lines in hopes to find something that's a little bit interesting and that I can play off of. While making a pass through these areas, I also like to go over and smooth out some of the lines. When I'm adding on these forms on top, it isn't meant to be distracting or too noisy for what's going on underneath in the secondary forms. I also want to make sure that I'm not destroying what I established underneath of these forms. I want to keep that integrity of what I am building on top of. One of the most common things that you tend to see with the younger artists when applying detail is that they do it at the expense of the forms that exist underneath it. When approaching detail, not every pore or stroke needs to be seen, but just enough to enhance what's underneath. Also, at this point, I like to use a modified dam standard just to reinforce some of the happy accidents that I have when making my brush strokes. When doing a detailing pass on a character, I sometimes don't necessarily have in mind what I want things to come out looking like on the end, and that can just manifest in a form of exploring and seeing what I like. It gives me freedom to just put something down on the model in hopes that it feels right. And if it doesn't, I can always just go back and change and modify. I try not to get too attached to any specific look when doing my details. One thing to note that I do always tend to struggle a little bit at this stage with the idea of blank canvas syndrome. Um, at this point, I've spent a lot of time sculpting these really clean and nice forms, and I don't want to mess that up. I get a little bit afraid to make strokes on it because I feel like I'm going to ruin what I already established. Well, to get over that fear, there are a couple of things that I feel like you can do. One thing that I feel like is a super easy solution is dragging and dropping alphas on the surface at a very low opacity to try and find some areas that you can start from. The other that usually works for me is just kind of cross hatching across the form with clay or standard brush. And when going across the form, I like to just break things up and start to add in and subtract things until I find stuff that starts to work. When approaching the process of detailing, I like to take it slow and make sure that the lines that I'm making don't start to feel too artificial. I want there to be a flow and break up to the rhythms and not just the same stroke over and over that creates an artificial look to our character. For this model, one of the things that I wanted to incorporate was some tension in the skin. I wanted to make it feel like certain areas of the skin were being kind of stretched to the limit. The lats on the back was a primary example of this effect that I wanted to try and capture. To accomplish something like this, I like to use a tighter brush stroke with a smaller brush and just kind of draw across the forms with multiple lines. Similar to what I'm doing with the other forms, I like to find a starting point and use smaller straight lines to help to create flow and a feeling of tension on the surface. This effect really lends itself to a model like this where the skin feels so tight over the, the anatomy of the character. This same sort of technique is also useful to help create the feeling of muscle striations. A good example of this is the calf muscle. Um, I use the same sort of method of cross-hatching across the form 
and just wiping some of it away to kind of feel like there's muscles that are really firing underneath the skin. Now when doing this pass on the model, I don't necessarily need to hit every single inch of the model. Some areas may lend themselves to a little bit of a cleaner form and it may also help your model feel not quite as noisy. So that's just kind of up to you on a case by case basis. When doing these forms, I just try my best to make it feel like the model's forms aren't quite as polished and 100% perfect. I like to create a little bit of imperfections on top of the surface and that's a lot of what this is doing. One thing that I can't reiterate enough is that this should be subtle and shouldn't disrupt the primary and secondary forms of the model that's underneath it. This stuff is really just kind of the icing on top, but too much of it can really overpower everything that you did underneath it. So just be as subtle as possible when you're doing your detail, and this should not be the primary thing that you're trying to make the viewer focus on. Now, after I've gone through and made a pass on the model, I can start to take the next step, which is going to be to adding the tertiary detail, which are different from the tertiary form that we just laid down. This is the part of the model that everyone loves and really obsesses over. This is going to be that micro surface level, poor detail breakup across the model. When I approach this layer, I follow a lot of the same thought process as before, and that's how can I add this detail while keeping the integrity of what I sculpted in the forms that came before it. This should be super subtle and not distracting from the rest of the character. So the first thing that I do before starting the details is I will create a base layer. This is going to allow me to have a little bit more fine control over how I apply the skin a little bit later in the process. It's just more granular control so I can make adjustments and pivots if I need to. Also at this state of the process, one thing that I'm going to set up as well is I'm going to store my clean mesh into a morph target so that I can start painting in and out some of the detail. You'll see a little bit more of this process in a moment. Now once I've gotten in my layer as well as my morph target in place, now I want to start breaking up the surface. To do this, I'm going to use the noise maker to tile some of this noise to get the model covered really quickly. Once I get a nice result inside noise maker, I don't actually apply this to the model. This is kind of the caveat of this process. Instead, I'm going to mask off what the generator did, and I'm going to go down to the deformation tab and inflate it. And this is just going to give me a little bit nicer result in my opinion. So now this is where storing all of that stuff inside the layers and the morph target is going to start to come in handy. Like I stated before, I don't want this detail to become too noisy and distracting from the form. So to prevent this from happening, I'm going to make a pass on the model using the morph brush, and I'm going to just start wiping away some of this detail that I added into it so that I can make things look a little bit cleaner and just kind of polish things up a little bit. For this detail, I mainly wanted to keep this a little bit more oriented towards the crevices and I wanted to keep the broader forms of the character a little bit more on the clean side. I do keep some hints of it on the surface, but again, I just want this to kind of break things up. I don't want it to be too distracting. One of the really nice features about the Morph Brush is I can knock some of this stuff back, but if I do mess up, I can bring it back and I can kind of push back and forth between the two and see if I can find some nice results um, with the brush. Now, after going through and giving a pass on this detail, I was feeling like some of the details could be pushed a little bit more. So to emphasize this, what I did is I masked, used a couple of combinations of the masks and I inflated based off of the detail that I had. This can give a really nice kind of like puffy feel to some of the details and it just starts to integrate with the form a little bit better. Now the next thing that I wanted to add onto this character was a little bit of an experimentation, but I wanted to try getting some kind of like peeling skin effect on the surface. But I approach this very much in the same way that I did before, so I separate this out on its own individual layer away from the detail that I had already added so that I can have a little bit more control of this uh, separate from what the noise was underneath it. To get this effect, I resorted back to Noise Maker and started messing with the noise patterns until I got something with a nice hard edge to it that I felt like I could kind of incorporate in a way of this skin peeling effect that I was after. 
I went ahead and masked it off and inflated, and the effect ultimately turned out pretty well and to my liking. So again, going back to this idea of not making this too distracting uh, in terms of details, I wanted this just to be localized in a couple of areas so that like when you're viewing the model, you might be like, oh, there's some peel in here or here or there, uh, but I didn't want it to overwhelm the model. So I went through with the morph brush and just wiped away the areas that I didn't want it to be localized at. Now, the last layer that I threw over the top of this model is just gonna be a small pore type of style of noise. The purpose of this was just to add a final layer of complexity to the surface. For this effect, I wanted this to be very shallow. I didn't want it to be too distracting, but I wanted it to be a layer that when you rolled the light across the surface of the bottle, you could just see a little bit of interest to it. You'll notice that the detail even looks pretty bad close up, but I'm not really worried about that because it's meant to just be subtle and not draw too much attention to itself. For details like this, there's multiple ways to kind of approach this, uh, but in most situations for me, because I work in a game style of character, this level of detail tends to get lost in the bakes when turning it into a normal map. So because of that, I like to try to not push quite as much focus into the high res for this kind of like micro detail. Uh, if anything, it is just meant to kind of break up the surface so that when the light comes across it, it feels like there's imperfections in the skin. Now to compensate for the resolution limitation, if I really wanted to get that nice crispy detail on top of the model, um, I would accomplish that inside of the engine where I wouldn't be limited to resolution in the same way that I am with the sculpted detail and baking it down to a 2K or a 4K resolution normal map. Okay, so now let's take a look at a before and after adding these details to the model. Overall, I like what the details came out looking like. I think that they do a really good job of reinforcing the character, adding a nice little layer of breakup, but it's not too much. If we take a step back and look at the model, it still feels like what it was intended to, but as we get closer, it's like, ooh, there's like these nice little bits of information um, that aren't distracting from what's underneath it. So now you'll probably notice after me kind of harping on this enough in the video that hopefully I've kind of bludgeoned this into your head, but the main point of the details isn't meant to distract from other things. It's kind of just meant to be a nice addition on top of the character. And you'll notice that if I go ahead and turn off the details on the model, it still looks good and stands on its own merit without the details. And that is what should happen when you apply details to a model. It shouldn't be distracting. It shouldn't overwhelm. It shouldn't be the primary focus. With that said, hopefully you guys found some of this stuff useful. In our next video, I'm going to take this piece through the texturing process and show how to approach a uh, skin for something that isn't necessarily human. So if that interests you, make sure to subscribe. If you guys have any suggestions for other content that you guys want to see in the future, make sure to throw that down in the comments. Again, thank you guys for stopping by and I'll see you in the next one.